Police are searching for a shooter after they say someone killed a Lexington man while he was sleeping in his bed. Lexington police continue to collect evidence after a drive-by shooting sends three people, including a child, to the hospital. Big changes are coming to Transylvania University. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Barbara Bailey. Bill has the day off. It's been a violent few days in Lexington where there have been five shootings since Sunday, three of them deadly with nine victims in all. The most recent happened just after two o'clock this morning on Gerald Drive in the Winburn neighborhood. A man was shot and killed while sleeping in his home. WKYT's Sean Moody is live near the scene now with the very latest. It's our top story at noon. Sean? Good afternoon, Barb. Police are just now starting to clear away from the house. Detectives have been here ever since the shooting happened around 2 o'clock this morning. They still don't have much of a description of a shooter. They're trying to figure out who shot and killed Thomas Brown through a window while he was sleeping in his bed. The shooting happened around 2 a.m. Police said Brown was asleep in his bed with his wife when someone fired several shots through a window. They said Brown was hit three or four times in the abdomen and legs. His wife wasn't hurt. The Brown died at UK Hospital. Police said their dogs tracked a Sent through the backyard toward McCullough Drive, but they still haven't found anyone. People who live along Gerald Drive said the shooting rattled them. This is the third homicide of the month here in Lexington, and all three of them are unsolved. What is going on in people's minds that you would be out doing this? And, you know, you say a prayer for people, um, and you're thinking, you know, thank God it's not here. And then. You wake up in the morning and it's here in the neighborhood. And across the street is a little bit too close. Now, police are hoping that anyone who lives here in the area saw something that they can maybe help break this case with. Uh, they also said that whoever did this may have shot at the couple's son. He was in another room in the house watching TV. He was not injured. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. And police said they don't have any information on a possible motive for the shooting. Police are also investigating another shooting in Lexington that injured three people, including a juvenile. It happened just after 10 o'clock last night on Breathitt Avenue. A man, woman, and teenager were shot while sitting on the porch. WKYT's Victor Puente has the latest on the search for suspects in this Crime Tracker report. After that shooting, police returned to this home earlier this morning looking for more evidence as to who fired those shots. Lexington police tell us a man, woman, and juvenile were sitting on their front porch on Breathitt Avenue when a dark colored SUV drove by and someone fired several shots from it. They say the woman was struck in the foot and the man and juvenile had minor injuries to their legs. All three were taken to the University of Kentucky Hospital with non life threatening injuries. They've since been released and were back at their home this morning as police collected evidence, including bullets from the scene. The woman who lives at the home told me everyone was okay, but she didn't want to talk about the shooting until police had finished their investigation. Lexington police haven't made any arrests and haven't released a description of the suspects, but say there were several people in the SUV. The shooting happened around 10 p.m. Monday. It's the same neighborhood where two shootings happened Sunday night. Police tell us they don't have any reason to believe this shooting is connected to any others in this neighborhood. They tell us they have increased patrols in this area. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. And police haven't discussed a possible motive in this shooting. Jury selection is underway in the trial of a Lexington man accused of sexually assaulting a co worker. Police say Clyde Sexton took advantage of Melissa Klein Smiley after she passed out at a strip club on Winchester Road in 2013. She died a few days later. Her husband is now suing Sexton and the strip club's owner. Sexton is charged with sexual abuse and tampering with evidence. Cleanup is underway at a marina on Lake Cumberland that was damaged by storms. These eyewitness pictures were sent to us from the Alligator 2 Marina at Indian Hills Resort in Russell County. Now, as you can see, the roof of a dock was knocked down. Our Phil Pendleton will have a look at the damage and we'll hear from the owners coming up in a report on WKYT News at 12:30. Although showers and storms have pushed out of the bluegrass, leaving behind some muggy temperatures, the heat and humidity will really ramp up as we head towards the week, the midweek. 
WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now. A look ahead. Boy, you can feel it out there today. Yeah, you really can. You got the humidity up, and that's going to stay that way throughout the rest of the week. And actually, it rises through the week. The next few days are the hottest as they come along. Live sky camera, there's your shot outside. Make sure of sun and clouds. As we discussed this morning, the clouds won't really do anything to you. We're sitting there. It's 77 degrees here in Lexington, 77 in Richmond. That goes for a lot of locations over toward the east, but look back towards 65. This is kind of an area we're going to be watching throughout the next couple of days because this region, what, you know, what temperatures they are, it's going to be moving from west to east. That warm air is going to be sliding in here from the west, and you'll start to see those 80s later on this afternoon. It won't get far into the 80s. Be there in the lower ones, but still, it's a pretty nice one in store, especially compared to the days to come. Because the focus of the forecast is how hot we're going to be. And yes, I said hot, not warm. We're talking 90s for several locations during midweek. I'll show you how high we go into the 90s coming up in a few minutes. All right, Micah, thank you. Lexington City Council is making several project recommendations to the city's new budget. One project that stood out is a traffic light for the new high school on Winchester Road. You can see crews are moving dirt around to get ready for that new school. Council members passed a proposal for a new light and intersection on Sir Barton Way at a cost of $150,000. The proposed new intersection will sit between Winchester Road and Greylag Way by Walmart. It is actually close to two other signalized intersections, um, but we feel that we can make the, the signal timing plans coordinated and it won't impact traffic flow through there. Now the plan still has to go through final council approval next week. If it passes, the new traffic light and intersection could be in place by this time next year. Well, the two candidates for Kentucky governor have agreed to take part in a series of debates, and one of them will be hosted by WKYT. Jack Conway and Matt Bevan will face off October 25th at Eastern Kentucky University. Our own Bill Bryant and WLKY's Vicki Dorch will moderate the debate. It will air commercial free from 6 to 7 that night, right here on WKYT. Well, demolition has begun on two dorms at Transylvania University. The school is tearing down Clay and Davis Halls to make room for two new residence halls and possibly a third. WKYT's Mike Linden has an update on the project now from the Transy campus. With the academic school year over, Transylvania University officials are moving forward with the demolition of two of their oldest residence halls. Both Clay and Davis Halls are on their way out. In their place, two new $7 million residence halls to go along with the other residence hall next door that will be finished by this fall. Clay and Davis Halls have been open since 1964, but in two weeks' time will be gone forever. Campus officials say despite some resistance from alumni to demolish the buildings, they're excited for change on campus. It's a bittersweet moment. There are lots of memories in both of those dorms, but we are excited to be moving forward to having brand new dorms for the class of 2016. Spark says both Clay and Davis residence halls will be finished by the fall of 2016, both sporting brand new names. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. And with all that, you can see big changes coming to Transylvania University.